I'm Thomas Widdershoven. I'm a graphic designer in Amsterdam. We, uh, together with my wife Nikki Gonnesse, we have a studio called Ton Nick, Thomas and Nikki, and we do graphic design mostly for the cultural sector, campaigns, political campaigns, and the city of Amsterdam, we did the logo for them as well. In Amsterdam, there's a huge creative sector, but the, the strange thing is that almost never do they own the, the buildings that they work in. And so we discovered that uh, basically uh, all these buildings are owned by, uh, by big corporations. So they're making money out of the cultural sector and they're actually not making the best, more, most beautiful buildings that can be made. So we had a feeling that if the cultural sector would, would, would make, create its own space, the quality would go up and the sector would be uh, more economically sound and strong. So with that, uh, we went to the city government and uh, we tried with this story to get a lease on a piece of property. So I think what is so special about this project is that it's based on, on passion and not on economics. So this is really what we want to show to the city, what we want to add to the city. Uh, and it's our vision on how we should live and work. So if you look at the challenges of this project, it was immense, of course, on many levels. But one of the biggest challenges was that this is the only urban street in Amsterdam city centre. So the whole city centre of Amsterdam is based on 17th century, 18th century and 19th century layouts. But there's only one street that is conceived in the 20th century, that is really urban, that is wide, it's an avenue and it has modern buildings next to it. So to really have this urban feeling in the building, we wanted floor to ceiling windows. Always very difficult to balance a facade because in between the windows, there is a very small strip of, uh, of the floor and then you get the whole window again. But then also we have a very small plot. So we were really fighting for space. We did have to balance not only the windows and the in-between space, but we also had to balance the stairs compared to the whole facade. Because I'm a graphic designer, I was thinking of uh, stripes uh, to balance everything because that's something I understand and uh, so I could balance all these elements very well with, when, I, when I would have a stripey building. But it was a very long trajectory again to find the right stripes because it's not uh, common. It was a, a long uh, search and in the end we found a very simple solution which is Trespa. So if you combine slats of Trespa you can really easily make color combination lines, uh, but that will also be long lasting. So I got in contact with Trespa and they uh, sent me some samples, but they also came by. And then I saw a new product, which is called Trespa Meteon, and this was really flat and matte. And I loved it a lot. And then after some discussion, we came up with the idea of using slats. So just cut up the big Meteon facade and then make a, a rhythm of slats of 18 and 19 centimeters. The whole idea behind this building is that we try to be ecological by having a long-term plan with the building so that it can be reused in many, many situations. So this is a building that can be residential and it can be offices and it can be restaurants and it can be retail. And it took us years to get the zoning system in such a way that this is all possible. And then it took us quite a bit of um, designing to also meet all, the, all those things. So we have a long time span with this building and in, and in that way we hope that it's an ecologically sound building. So what, whatever we put on the, on the facade has to have a, a long time span as well. So in that way Trespa fits well. For me a building should always have this form follows function idea. So I was thinking of having uh, a concrete facade. Then I discovered that all the concrete that I see is actually a very thin facade because it's a, it's a layered system because we have this big insulation. So actually, and also we have the same with bricks, actually we're bringing in way too much material uh, if you build in the situation of Holland where you, have, uh, where you have a wall that keeps it, a support, then you have a huge insulation and then you actually need a very tiny skin to cover it, that's all. And everything that you add extra of concrete or, or bricks is actually uh, not necessary, so why do it? So that's when I got into the idea that it should be uh, as thin a skin as possible. Arjen was able to detail all these things so well, uh, of course together with Michon who applied it, that in the end it's incredible how, how fine, refined and detailed it is. So in Amsterdam we have a, a quite subdued architecture style. So there's a lot of brick, a lot of wood, a lot of greys. Uh, and then we have this very graphic building 
that uh, we had in mind. So I was a little bit worried about how people would react because it's a love or hate building, but uh, the reactions are really, really positive. It's also because it's the Wiebautstraat, so it's this urban environment and uh, I think it could use a bit of fun or a bit of presence or a bit of uh, expression. Thank you.